Uh, good afternoon. It's uh, 2 p.m. on Wednesday, January 12th. Uh, my name is Joan Jennings. I'm the chair of the Tarpon Springs Public Art Committee, and I'd like to call the meeting to order. Marissa, can you call the roll, please? Ms. Jennings? Here. Ms. Gregory? Here. Mr. Meals? Here. Ms. Robinson? Here. Mr. Sallow? Here. Mr. Stackhouse? Here. Ms. Hennessy? Present. Oh, we have a full full boat today. Uh, we don't have any guests. Um, do Has every, everybody had a chance to read the minutes of December 8th? And if so, can I get a motion to accept as submitted? Uh, I'd like to have a correction. Okay. Um, First we have to... Oh, I'll I move that we... Okay. Trish moves. Second. 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 Okay. Now, go ahead. Correction would be that Sisler Field has not been completed. The mural's not completed? Yes, it is. Oh, it is? Is it? Yeah. We're talking about the mural, mural not the field. The, the, field. Base, the baseball field. Mural. Softball. Mural. Yeah, it's completed. Trees. Yeah, it's all, it's it all is. done, isn't it? Okay, it didn't look good to me. But okay. <clears throat> Never mind, I withdraw. <laughs> okay. I have a correction, Joan. Sure. Yeah. I'm not sure of my standing since I wasn't here, but I did listen to the YouTube <laughs> tape. <laughs> In the motion um, to ask for a workshop, mm -hmm. which you stated very clearly, and then Bill motioned, mm -hmm. um, is to coordinate the functionality and funding, uh, a workshop between the planning department, program management, the city manager, and the sustainability committee and new manager, in addition, of course, to the PAC. Okay. The, mi the minutes do not include program management and the city manager, and I okay. think that's important, which I'll address later when we get to that thing on the agenda. Okay. But was it discussed in the meeting? Yeah. Okay. Your, your, your stated motion was... Okay. No, that's fine. ...to just... include all of those elements and the minutes... Right. Okay. ...did not include them all. Okay. So, Marissa... Did you get that? Maybe, maybe uh, Lucianne, you could uh, rephrase it and email it to Marissa to include in the minutes so it's no. accurate. I got the correction. Okay. Okay. It's fine. All right. So uh, I'd like a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Amen. Trish, second. Bill. Okay. Minutes are accepted as amended. Now I'm going to turn the proceedings over to Diane to elect the officers. Oh. Okay. Um, we are, every January, we uh, go ahead and elect a chair and a vice chair. And so are there um, any people that would like to make a, a motion or a recommendation for either themselves or uh, another uh, member of the PAC? Lucian? I'd like to propose that Joan continue as chairman. Okay. Thank you. I second that. Are there any other candidates that would like to throw their hat in the ring for chair? Okay. Congratulations, Joan. Thank you. <laughs> and I'd like to uh, also ask Lucienne if she would continue to serve as the vice chair. It's been a burden, but... <laughs> <laughs> you were a real stalwart. <laughs> Anything for Tarpon. Okay. So do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Great. Old business. Okay. Uh, Mike Elwell's Pelican sculpture purchase was approved by the Board of Commissioners. And um, uh, the good news is that Mr. Elwell and Joe Reza from Public Works will be installing the sculpture on the sponge docks tomorrow morning. Oh, wow. Friday. Friday. Friday? Friday, the 14th. Oh, Friday. I'm sorry, the 14th. I thought you said Thursday. Where okay. Going, where is it going to be? Um, do you know where the public bathrooms are on the docks, where the two Georges, the charter boat mm -hmm. docks? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, there's like a little, um, it's pebbly, like a little like part with the, with yeah. right mm -hmm. along the river. Okay. So it'll back Perfect. on the river. That would be cool. Yeah. Be cool. So, uh, Diane, I believe, took a picture of the exact location, uh, you know, 
Yeah, Eva marks the spot. <laughs> um, there was a concern, and I think if you read the news article about the um, the bench, uh, the bench itself is bronze. So uh, there's a concern that if people sit on it for selfies in the hot sun, it might be a burning experience. <laughs> they may not stay very long. They might not. <laughs> They'll move on to the next person yeah. to sit. Right. Right. Yeah. Take, take, a picture, Diane, take a Diane, picture and jump up. Yeah. Right. Diane and I talked about putting like a little branding plate on there so people could say, you know, <laughs> I've been to Tarpon, Tarpon Springs. Springs. I think we should have a comment <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a good idea. Okay. Um, the problem was discussed both with the sculptor, Mr. Elwell, and uh, Desmond of St. Kate's. And um, they suggested a protective lacquer, very similar to the lacquer they put on the story time bench, but that was wood, and people weren't actually sitting on it. Um, the sculptor, Mr. Elwell, also suggested putting a uh, umbrella covering pad on it. And umbrella doesn't fade. It's made specifically for outside use, and I believe it's used in boating. David, you yes. uh -huh. yeah. UVA and UVB resistant. There you go. So uh, after it's uh, after it's installed, we'll have to look into putting the you know the covering on the bench. And do you I've mean over the bench or actually on actually the on bench? the bench so people mm -hmm. can sit on it without getting. Mike Elwell had mentioned that um, in times past he's used a, just a piece of sunbrella and it has like a big piece of Velcro on it. And then what he does is he puts it on the bench and then he does the Velcro underneath the bench. Mm -hmm. And it, he said it's <coughs> held pretty well. And okay. you know, if you get a thick enough piece, and so right. I don't, we'll see. I, th I think uh, down the road also we're going to have to consider maybe those sail shades. Mm -hmm. Those are also sunbrella. Yeah. So uh, I don't know whether that would be our responsibility of the cities, but we'll have to look into it. Well, you'll know if people complain. Yes, yeah, exactly. A little warning about Sumbrella. It's not maintenance-free. Mm -hmm. I use it okay. in my outside cushions. And bird droppings, mm. tree fall, Ooh, yeah. mm -hmm. humidity in that location, mm -hmm. it, it'll need to be um, monitored. Mm-hmm or it'll get looking pretty awful. Right. Well, it doesn't sound like something like that would be a big investment either. Mm. I mean, even if we had to do... Just somebody has to pay attention. Right. You know, change it out. Okay, so the... There it is. Sun sales. Okay, the sports field mural project. Bill and David. Uh, the only thing we had last time that we discussed was Sisler Field, and we were going to wait to do much more there until the construction was complete. And there's still temporary fencing and a number of things around Sisler that, so I don't believe the city is done with what they're going to do there. Yeah, and um, because of the pandemic and a lot of, well, there's a lot of city employees out, and I know that Public Works has suffered too because their people are always out and about. You know, so, um, yeah, things might be a little bit backed up. So I would say it's probably deferred for at least another month or two mm -hmm. till we can. Okay. One to two months. Okay, the illuminated art boxes, the installation update, all the phase two art has been um, installed. Uh, we received a proposal from Allen at UPS. It's in your handouts, the backup, to purchase an additional 40 vinyl panels to expedite the installation of the art going forward. I think it's 4885 for the for the 40 panels. And um, last year, uh, the panels were unavailable because they were being used as uh, COVID barriers. <laughs> so we were lucky to get the panels we got. It was, you know, it was just a run on that vinyl. So um, they'll be cut to fit the boxes so that when we go to change out the art, they can just put all of the new art on the spare panels, and then Public Works could just go up and put them all up at the same time, mm -hmm. right. take the old ones mm -hmm. out, and they can remove the decals mm -hmm. with the hair dryer, and then they're ready to go ne for next year. Yeah, I think that's great. So... Um, 
Trish, I gather you'd make a motion to oh, approve the purchase. <laughs> okay. Yes. Do I have a second? That's a second. Any right. discussion? I think it's a good idea. I think the, the time we save in manpower yeah, and because yeah. it, it really didn't look good the way they do it. I know. Staggered. Yeah, with the half. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. Staggered it really. Yeah. Right. Okay. So let's approve. And um, the other thing too, we have a nice little surprise from David. Thank you, David. He has oh. done a QR code. Nice. For the polls. And if you look in your backup, okay. he's there are some there's a printout of what they would look like on the polls. And there's also a copy of um, what's uh, on the website. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, I think um, uh, I actually tried this, the QR code, and it, it takes it to the Tarpon Arts page, and on the bottom, it, there's a link to the PDF of all the art. I think the lettering needs to be made a lot larger. The, you mean the, the PDF part? Yeah, the link to the PDF. Okay, that's it's, easy. That enough. shouldn't be that big that's a deal. That's a great idea. Yes. Yeah, great job. Yeah. So, uh, David, did you want to yeah. talk about some other ideas for the actual printout of the QR codes? So, Does anybody want to try this, by the way? So it just being a sticker, I kind of think it looks a little, I hate to word, use the word cheap, <laughs> but in for alignment issues as well. And, and plus somebody might peel it, pull it off, or think, hey, we need to sticker bomb this pole now. And so I was thinking maybe if we did some type of flush mount, maybe even if it followed the diameter of the pole, mm -hmm. both sides of it, and then put the QR code on it, maybe a little inscription of what it is, it would look more like it's supposed to be there, in a sense. Um, I'm sure that mount wouldn't be too much. Maybe it could just be plastic. Uh, me and Joan were speaking. It could be strapped to the pole or glued to it or some type of adhesive, like a double-sided tape. Um, obviously, there would be things as far as, like, if somebody's grabbing the pole, they could catch it, pull it off. Uh, or somebody could vandalize it and pop it off, so maybe that might need to be monitored. But I don't know if we were deciding to put these on every pole, or if it was just going to be on a few, like kind of sporadic, spread out. Is this to show the three different sizes that you worked with? Correct. And kind of like... Oh, do you want to pass this down to Debbie? The pictures of it being a little further away right. shows right. you just like what it kind of looks mm -hmm. like. I think people are... are they recognize the QR codes right. for the most part now. Sometimes they do this, especially at a restaurant when they have to look at their phone mm -hmm. for a menu. But it's just an excellent idea. It right. really is. Yeah. What if you did a sticker and just put, for more information about the illuminated art boxes, you know, scan this QR code, right. you know, just at the top. You know, I don't, I'm not thinking that the, the labels are, you know, bad. I mean, no, I, I we, think we thought maybe we, uh, you know, include the uh, public art committee, the little logo. Yeah, uh, yeah just exactly. And maybe sp on spruce the it up a little. Or something. Yeah, right. like the instruction on how to use it and then like the, you know, compliments of, you know, mm. City of Harper Springs Public Art Committee or mm. something on the bottom with the logo. Just because at least the sticker, I don't think, you know, if it's a good adhesive, I'm not sure people will try to pull it off because they'll recognize it as, Okay, this is an informational thing, you know, kind of. Mm -hmm. So, right. I don't know. It's it works like a charm. Yep. <laughs> I mean, in my sense, you know, I can see if it's off just a little oh. bit. So, yeah. that could be an issue with public works putting them up there. Um, if you make a mount that is the diameter of the pole, there's no other way to put it but straight. Mm -hmm. So, it would, you know, fit directly to that, that curvature. Um, and you could still make it flush. You can make it inset to where the uh, QR code sits in it. And then you could still have like a bar above, a bar below that says scan me or what okay. have you. A lot of QR codes say scan me in the middle of them. Mm -hmm. But you could put, you know, Tarpon Arts, scan me or scan here or whatever it is yeah. that we decide. Um, but for it just to be a sticker, I think it, it, it is good. Mm -hmm. But I think it could be a little bit further do you have create. something have you have you looked into something that we could use I mean I have a 3d printer that prints ABS mm -hmm. and so 
I could take the dimensions of the pole and print one, but that would, I don't know if this <coughs> pole is the same dimension all the way up, but I mean, I could do that and then put just a sticker on it with, you know, some type of wording on top and below mm -hmm. and then see what it looks like if we want to do that. Well, and I, I, Diane, I don't think it would be a problem if, uh, you know, David went ahead and did this if we could reimburse him for his materials. Mm -hmm. Sure. I think that would be only fair. Mm -hmm. Oh, to print all of them? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, if you come up with a, a system that works, you know. We'd <coughs> okay. Yeah, I could, I could, I could see. Um, how many would we want to do? Would it be every other one or every three or all of them? Downtown, too. Yeah. Box downtown. Well, there were there were fifteen boxes, so should we do? I guess David's question is: Should we do fifteen stickers or eight stickers? That's just the sponge shops. Uh, are we not? That's adding, all we have. Are we not adding some? Are we doing downtown <laughs> also? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we've talked yeah. about adding some. Yeah. Well, I think you should do all twenty because we talked about putting the rest of them up. You know, that's right. Towards okay. Rusty Valley. That's right. We do have twenty of them. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I guess we could do. We could do 20 of them. You want to test it first? Yeah, let me, let yeah, me do, a, do a prototype. And see. I mean, there might be something already made for that. I mean, the 3D printing is, it looks good, but the resolution isn't super high. It's not injection molded. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, you're going to see some layer lines, which the normal person isn't going to go up and be like, oh, you know, somebody printed that. But, um, yeah, I can print one for the next meeting and, what would happen if it has a scratch on it, or does that make it unusable then? If it scratched the QR code? Yeah. It could. So it could. I so if it's damaged, if it, maybe if it had, like, some type of UV gloss coating over it, um, that would be, obviously, I wouldn't print the stickers out. That would be, um, mm -hmm. you know, a company that did that. But I think that they make some type of coated sticker. Mm -hmm. I would imagine, too, if it was adult height eye level, as you would hang art, mm -hmm. that it would be, in, because a lot of people, even in our COVID times, will come around a pole and grab it with their hand or rest a bicycle up against it or what mm -hmm. have you. Right. So if it was at eye level, would right. be... Yeah, a sticker, you're not going to have anything hanging up. You're not going to brush your hand around it and mm -hmm. catch it. So there's a you know a plus and downside with everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. could you come up with a prototype sure. for the next meeting, or if you'd come up with something earlier? Diane, could that be emailed around to everybody? Yes, but you can vote on it right. until the meeting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I can print one up and then stick it on the pole, take a picture of it, and then bring it in. Okay. Everybody can okay. That's, that's great. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, David. You're welcome. Okay. Um, has anyone given any more thought about uh, adding the additional... Uh, boxes where, where we're going to put them or what art's going to go in them. I thought you were about to send out another call to artists. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, ha we, we, have, we, have, extra art. we have extra art from the last submission. And I think at the last meeting, Bill had uh, given us pictures yeah. around, you know, the uh, uh, naiads, naiads and off to right. Rusty Bellies. And that's where we wanted to kind of take them, I thought. And I thought we were going to keep one or two for over at Sisler for the, uh, um, for the baseball mm -hmm. sports complex. Okay. So I think we were going to put three. Three down there? Three down at that location. I think that's what we talked about the last time. Okay. And it was either three or four, and then one or two at, at Sisler, so whatever. I thought you said that Sisler, they were too big for Sisler, 30 by 30s. No. I don't think so. Okay. I, would, I, I think one of them will definitely fit. I'm not sure about the second mm -hmm. one. And again, with all the construction there, it's a little difficult to, to no. discern. I just don't recall any large falls there, but I haven't been there in a while either. Yeah. Yeah. There's one right by the uh, uh, concession stand. Okay. You know, when you first walk, you first walk in. So mm -hmm. that one, right that one there. would be probably a yes. Mm -hmm. okay. um, there's probably at least one good spot there. Um, I think it was kind of iffy with a second location. Yeah, because then when you walk, 
you know, when you walk to the left where the new concession's been built with the granite blocks, mm -hmm. and then you walk through those, you're able to swing to the right, and then there's it separates the fields, and there's a little walkway. There's some poles in there, too. Mm. But do we want but it's something lit up if they're playing baseball? I don't know. And it's, it's not high profile because sure. not everybody's <laughs> going to go back in through there. So, you know. Mm -hmm. At least one there, and then three or four. If Any chance a ball will hit it? <laughs> There's always a chance. It's always. It's always. Yeah. Always. always. You're going to do anything at the sports complex. There's going to be footballs, soccer balls, baseballs. Right. Mm -hmm. Put a car parked right next to it. It'll always hit the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I think there was another pole near where the mural was just put, too, wasn't mm -hmm. there? Yeah. That both sides of it could have it. I mean, that would get a lot of traffic, I would think. Okay. Now, do you want to put the uh, historic photographs in the in these art boxes? Or do you want to put art? I don't think we ever, did we decide? We didn't decide. Yeah. It was up Same for time. discussion. Right. I don't know that there was a decision made. Okay, does Andrew have any thoughts? I think we're the public art committee. Art. No, we're not the historical society. I'm in the historical society. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, art in the boxes. Good. I mean, that's, I'm one of seven here, so. Yeah, no. Art, 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 art. I'd say art. Art, art. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah, some of those left over, um, I was just thinking, some of those left over art uh, pieces were mine, so. Mm -hmm. Are they the yeah, same? Yeah historical photographs we've been seeing everywhere? Um, no. Uh, well, uh, the thing is that uh, uh, I have a bunch of um, old photographs of Sisler himself, you know, and, and, you know, but I don't think, you know, Lucy Ann's absolutely right with the art yeah, committee. We yeah. should put art in there. Art. Photography is also art. Mm -hmm. I think there's a prohibition against reproductions. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'd be right. Be right on it. Right, yeah, that's right in the ordinance. Yeah, good point. So, mm -hmm. do you want to do you want to have people submit new art for the for Sisler or use leftover art from the last call? Anyone? How about we start with what we already have? Yeah. Okay, so that sounds good. I'm have. just I'm just trying to poll everybody yeah. and yeah. see what's up. Yeah. Okay, so. Diane, I guess we'll revisit the what's left over. What's left over? Because we have two, we have two uh, submissions that we could right. choose from. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know whether we need to look at them again. Both. Well, somebody. I mean, somebody need to select. Yeah. The ones. So that's. Ten. Yeah. So we're talking about five more boxes. So that's ten more pieces of art right. that we need. Anything else on the art boxes, the Sisler Field boxes? Any other thoughts, comments? Is it too much to, to do something like a call to the schools to do like an art thing and then we put their art up, whoever wins that? I mean, is that... It's it's doable, it's, sure. But Would, would you want to do it now or for the say in the fall? Would the schools take that over or would it be something that we would have to deal with? Well, the thing is that uh, we've been pretty disappointed every time we've approached the school to do any art, uh, art projects, because I know, uh, you know, sunset. Yeah, Jeff Young had, you know, nobody to do the sunset thing. You know, nobody stepped up to the plate. We've had some other projects that have gone begging. What if we checked with the uh, sports teams themselves and see if there's any arts amongst the. Oh, that's, a, that's a good thought. Yeah, you know, if, if they have some artwork that they would like to submit, you know, that like the coaches and yeah, check with the coach and see if he had, they had any of the students or any of the athletes. Okay. Because you're right, we've been disappointed every time with the, the schools themselves. Right. Yeah, the only ones that came through were the Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts. <laughs> They were awesome. <laughs> they were awesome. I still want to elect them to Congress, but <laughs> still, still a little on the young side. Lucianne? 
I had a question listening to the tape of the December meeting. Mm -hmm. Something about a kit that was being turned over um, to the city. I, I didn't understand that whole. Uh, when we approved the money for the Girl Scouts, it included some items that could be reused, like safety vests. Oh. And you know, paint pans and brushes, 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 yeah. brushes and things rollers, like that that can rollers. be, you know, used going forward by other troops if they want to do some additional pro you know projects so they don't have to be repurchased. So is there a plan for this troop to recruit another another group, or is it just no? I, I done. When we were still meeting back at City Hall, I remember uh, we asked the troop leader if they would you know, sort of do this as an ongoing project, and it seemed to be the initiative of this, that one particular group from the one particular yep. troop. Is there Debbie? only one troop in Tarpon Springs? Uh, it's, they're not in Tarpon, I don't believe. Are they? This I, group. I believe, I thought they were from Tarpon Springs. Oh. And there's usually, could be a few different troops. They usually take a certain number of kids. Yeah. So I wonder if we could maybe approach the Girl Scout Council and ask them. That's a good idea. Would you mind taking that on? I wouldn't mind at all. I was kicked out of the brownies, so I'm I was not kicked do out of the Girl Scouts, <laughs> but I, I don't hold any grudges. There's got to be a statute of limitations. I think so. <laughs> on the um, oh, I don't know about that. It was no? pretty serious. <laughs> on Tarpon Arts. I think I was org, six. <laughs> um, under public art, there is a section for that that you can refer people to um, so for for the Girl Scouts project okay it does have you know yeah. information okay okay um, any other comments about this or can we move on to the black history project okay um, the update, um, I finally got all of the selection panel's comments. I collated them. Of the 14 submissions, four will be investigated further. That will, Those were the top four out of the 10. Um, Diane and I discussed this. I will contact the remaining four artists with the selection panel comments, probably first by email and then possibly by um, you know, some kind of FaceTime, and you know, if you'd like, we could even do a, some kind of Zoom setup for the next meeting. Be great. Okay. So maybe we could talk to Mark about that. And your letter is in here. Right. John. Yeah, we, we did a draft of, of a letter to the, uh, the artists whose uh, submissions were not chosen. It's in your handouts. Mm -hmm. I think we tried to be gentle, but if you would take a look at it, I'm open to any and all suggestions, corrections. The thing that was difficult about the, the comments from the selection panel were many of them dealt more with history and culture than with the actual art per se. You know, some people liked the piece, but they felt it didn't convey the historic message. Right. So, if that makes sense. <clears throat> Is it a secret who the four are? Uh, no, but uh, Diane, I, I don't have it with me. It was uh, McCoya, Bolano, um, yeah. uh, Oliver, I think. I wrote, I wrote them all down. I forgot to. Oh. My notebook. I can email. And all of them, you know, had gotten suggestions about, you know, revising the images. None of them were. Oh, and the other consideration, too, is that some of them seem extremely ambitious for the budget. So I just want to reassure uh, us that these projects could actually be done within our budget. You know, I don't want them to say, well, you know, yeah, this is, you know, this is nice, 
you know, oh yeah, we can do it. But you know, and we know your budget's 135, but we really need 200 to do it. So I just wanted to get all of our ducks in a row with each one of the submissions. Robert, is that? Uh, People always ask for more money. Of course. Because <laughs> they always, you know, as they're building it, unforeseen things happen. You know, right. Uh, glitches in the cost of the foundation. Mm -hmm. For instance, or the unavail unavailability of something. Sure. Things could drive it up. Uh, right. But most contracts do consist of the phrase not to exceed. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, exactly. Thank you for your insight. Mm -hmm. Any comments on the letter? I need to go to that. It says fine. Okay. And even very nice to respond to them. Mm. <laughs> Quite often, you have no, <laughs> no indication. Well, Robert, one of my pet peeves is what I call the black hole mm -hmm. of modern communication, where people submit things or send things in, and they just don't know where it goes. Mm -hmm. So I at least want to let them know that you know we did give As them due consideration. And so, Marissa, I guess can you do a mail merge, and maybe I could come over there and <coughs> sign them, or I could send you a. The only question we can figure something out. that I had was the logo oh. for the TARP and Arts. Is oh, did you want to use the public art well, committee I, logo? I was just confused. That It's just confusion on my part. I didn't. Oh, I, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, yeah, substitute the uh, public art committee logo, Diane. Mm. Good catch. Yes. Yeah. By the way, I thought the most interesting part of the meeting that I listened to was your discussion on branding. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe at a later point in the meeting we can go back to that because I think that's... Sure. It's a very good point. And here's a great example of it. Right. <laughs> okay. This is really pretty. I, I like this one. It is nice. Mm -hmm. It's very it's nice. nice. Yeah. But I was... And it's very no, because it's, it's coming from the Public Art Committee. So so other than the logo change, it's good to go? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, I have some good news. I know Diane was in shock this morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I actually got a text from Desmond at St. Kate's. He made my day. Uh, let's see, read his exact. Good news, we have a schedule to pick up the NIADS Monday, 24 January. I just spoke to the Foundry. They have had several rounds of COVID sickness and loss, which significantly hindered the progress. Mm -hmm. they, the statues have plates and are now very sturdy. The heat process for welding the plates effectively ruins the original patina on the lower half of the sculptures. The Foundry has to not only recreate the patina, they are carefully working to match the original patina of the upper half of the sculpture before they lacquer and wax them. So at least we know where we stand with this. Progress mm -hmm. is made. And uh, thank you, Desmond, wherever you are. And uh, so. The Boca Raton in New York City, one of the <laughs> driving back and forth with art. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so that's, that's in process. Every time I drive through that roundabout, I miss them. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you know, the people that are sitting around it don't seem to miss them. They don't know they're missing. Exactly. They know. Yeah. 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 They're they enjoying know. it as much. Mm hmm. Okay. New business um, the endangered species sculptures. Uh, I think Diane asked us all to pick our favorite endangered species, uh, you know, to possibly do something on our own with this rather than. So are we voting to let the artists know that we're not going to pursue their, their, um, I'm sorry. their offer? I, I think that was the general. I think it was kind of discussed, but we, I don't know if we vote, you voted on it, but well, we can just. Well, my recollection is that everybody thought it was a good idea to do something representing the local endangered species, but I think that they were way out of our price range. Mm -hmm. okay. So, and you know, I think a lot of their work was not uh, particularly pertinent to our area. 
I mean, I love elephants, but you know, other than looking in the mirror, I haven't seen any lately. <laughs> so I did a little bit of research for Arizona, our area, mm -hmm. and so mm, there are any number of birds, cold-blooded animals, warm-blooded animals, and insects that are endangered mm -hmm. or threatened. And while I was down in the Keys, I came across a shop that was soon to be going out of business. Mm -hmm. He had um, a manatee that was probably a bronze, about this big. It was absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and he wanted to sell it to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, not only did he have the manatee, he had a wood stork. Ooh. Um, and they're all original pieces, I presume. Were original pieces, yeah. Wow. Now I'm going back down to the Keys um, in next month. I don't know if the gentleman will still be there. Uh, he did give me his card. Okay. But, um, did you happen to take any pictures of them? I did. And uh, they were beautiful pieces mm -hmm. um, that we would be proud to put out. And um, uh, do you have any idea of the price range? Well, he was almost doing like a two for one for 17000 Ooh, that's certainly doable. So um, th they were truly nice pieces, but um, it, it's just there's so many. The wood stork, the um, scrub jay, the rosette spoonbill, Ooh. gopher turtle, sea turtle, it was sea turtle also, mm -hmm. American gator, a bat, salamander, mm -hmm. manatee, red wolf, the Florida panther. Wow. Mm. Yeah. And as far as insects, butterflies, butterflies and bees. I mean, there's just so many. I, I'll scroll through to see what I can find and, and right. pass the phone. Yeah, because I went through the uh, Fish and Wildlife has a complete right. list. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, you know, I have a PDF if anybody yeah. needs it. But 2018, I, I, we updated it. Last. Mm -hmm. I think it would be um, we would be well served by using our own community and. By that I mean Florida mm -hmm. or lo local states. Shipping is astronomical, mm -hmm. um, but that's just uh, my opinion. But uh, yeah, maybe get some more information, Debbie. If, if you, you know, could. I'll see if he's still. Does he have a website with those photos on? I took the photos, mm. but I mean, does he? As an artist, does he have a website that we could so look at? He is an entrepreneur, oh. and he had like a lot of everything, mm -hmm. um, whether it was painted art or um, even some furniture and like a gallery, really a gallery, thing. like mm -hmm. very unusual, very eclectic. Mm -hmm. Sounds so like is US. he the artist, <laughs> Debbie? Pardon or me? Is, he, is he the artist, or th does no, he own he, a gallery? He owns the, we'll call it a sh gallery, I guess. Gallery. Oh. I think it used to be like a tavern. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Sounds like Key West. Yeah. Key West. <laughs> yeah, because I, I also went to uh, FWC, and it, uh, I guess the... The biggest ones were the bald eagle, the manatee. So I had my husband stand next to the piece. This is manatees. Oh, good. good next scale. to it are cranes. Yeah. And I had him next. So like one, two, three. I think that's really all I pour. And yeah, monkeys too if you want monkeys. So go this way because you don't want to see me in my bikini. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I could have printed them up and given them to you, but I didn't. <coughs> Maybe if you could email them to Diane. Mm -hmm. I like the manatee. I like my husband in it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Randy, the stand back, there. The back, the back of, of him. You didn't want to. I said, just stand there so Candy's I can. back, yeah. Yeah, just get a scale. Size. Right, yeah. yeah, the scale. Yeah. Oh, I like the wood storks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love wood storks. <laughs> That's, yeah. 
That is cool. And he was very willing to um, oh, that's to make nice. a deal. Isn't that nice? Yeah. yeah. Now, as far as who the sculptor is and the foundry, I have n I have no idea. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't think he really did either. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many of so them are there? Quite a few. Yeah. How many of the same? Uh, right, exactly. Same are they numbered? Are they not numbered? Yeah. Are they unique or? Yeah, it would be original, much better if um, they were original. Yeah. So he isn't representing artists. He's just yes, gathered well, this up. I think I think a lot of his things, and believe me, the place was packed. Was things that he had collected oh. over the years. But it was a gallery of sorts. But believe me, it had everything from um, like estate jewelry to beautiful paintings, beautiful artwork, mm -hmm. photography. These bronze pieces, mm -hmm. glass. It was it was quite it was a huge shop. And where is it studied? Uh, in the Keys. Where exactly in the Keys? I would say it was. I don't think it was. It, maybe it was Key West. Maybe it was Key West. I'll have to take a pictures before and after those pictures and tell you exactly where I was. <laughs> Yeah, should be I think it was by street. Louis's backyard, to tell you the truth, yeah. but I, I don't know. <laughs> the Vol Street. It, it acknowledged the Vol Street. Okay, yeah. great, yeah. great. Yeah. There we go. So at least I know where to go back and look when mm -hmm. I go back. Are these chickens bronze? <laughs> <laughs> Are they eggs I golden? have a thing for chickens. You all might as well know. Are they from Ybor City? You might as well know that I have a thing for chickens. I wish I could have chickens in my yard, but I have a terrier, West Highland terrier. Mm -hmm. That would not mix. No, no, no mix right there. She does keep me rodent free, though, and uh, armadillos are at a all time low. <laughs> okay, so Debbie, you're going to follow up on I will on this follow guy. Up on that. Okay, so maybe get a list of all he has and some images and uh, prices and uh, transportation costs. Of course, we could all do a road trip. To we could all do a road <laughs> trip. I've go. I got a condo all situated. Bar <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sunshine Law. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're heading for more sunshine. Right. I mean, it's an agenda and more. Right. No Deb monkeys, right? No monkeys. Okay. No monkeys. Debbie, how about Randy's red truck? Hey, it works for everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, even my Lexus, I can pop a few in the back. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to follow up. And this sounds like, this sounds great. Can okay. I follow up on this for a minute? Sure. Because yes. I, I came up with my list of 10 possibilities, mm -hmm. and they're all the same thing. Right. And thinking of uh, Tarpon Springs and endangered uh, critters that relate to us, mm -hmm. and just driving by Spring Bayou, you see it right there. Oh, yeah. I mean, the manatee is such a uh, ubiquitous thing for mm -hmm. especially a lot of visitors here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I notice I'm here for future projects, a uh, water feature in the park in Craig's Park. Yeah, that's... Um, you know, I could just see a... What I what I recommend is to try to find a full-size bronze manatee and put it in the middle of a splash pad. And you have you have a water feature or something mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. you can combine the two. It's a big-ticket item. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be very attractive to, to people. Mm -hmm. I mean... Uh, I mean, that logo there is Tartan Springs. I, I've never seen a tartan there. I've seen a lot of manatees. They're hard to come by. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's something that would be, it would really connect with the city, with people's experience of the city, uh, That that's not really part of the sponge docks. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it would identify, I think, the, the area of uh, Spring Bayou. And, and uh, I believe that was part of our conversation yeah. last month. Yeah that they would be put in appropriate areas. And, and the manatee is, is certainly endangered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what did I read just recently? 20% of them died this I'm year. Or something yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're starving, they're being they killed. They were starving. Or, you know. mm -hmm. So uh, mostly on the East Coast, I have to say. But mm -hmm. I've been seeing them off my dock in, in uh, Stremer Bayou. Have you? Yeah. yeah. I've never seen them there before. And where's that? Kramer. We also have a manatee exhibit in the Heritage Museum, quite large one, mm -hmm. and a uh, big paper mache, life-size manatee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I could just see people, uh, you know, if, if that could be 
connected somehow with a water feature, you know, like a splash pad, something the kids could stomp around on and mm -hmm. have a pattern in there where you don't have to get wet if you don't want to, you know, um, as, a, as an attraction to, to Craig Park. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of room there, and I imagine they have uh, infrastructure that could probably hook up to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, splash pads aren't, aren't all that uh, technologically challenging like a fountain would be. Mm -hmm. I mean, fountains with Florida water are, are, you know, you know, from the Naiad and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got a, you don't have a, tr a fountain, you have a trickle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> downloading now, but we'll come up with it now. I like that idea. Yeah, I do too. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. the statues should be interactive almost. Like, mm -hmm. we went to the zoo and they had one of those tortoises that the kids were getting on. Mm -hmm. Twilight, yeah. 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 So that was kind of neat. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, definitely worth it. Dinosaur a world, you can climb inside the dinosaur and put your head in there. <laughs> nice. Now, I mean, it's it is, and it's yeah. and it's really great for the, it's for the kids and mm -hmm. and the adults love it. But mm -hmm. when you see the kids and then the parents taking the special interest in trying to get those pictures, yeah, I mean, it's it is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And, and I that think is yeah. how we educate them. Yeah. Did you put your other mm -hmm. thing in there? I'll go to you. Okay. Well, we're up to our. Oh, bugaboo here, the electric boxes. Did, j just to go back real quick, sure. we did kind of scratch the Gilly and Mark Shatner. Yes. Okay. I just want to okay. make sure. I, I think that was kind of the decision we made last month. But okay. uh, Lucianne? Yeah, uh, in conjunction with that, I think it would be helpful to the artists who come in from the world and submit these applications. I know we have the master plan mm -hmm. on our website where they find this form, but I think we need a very specific question on their application that says, please describe how your project relates to the PACS master plan. Mm -hmm. Because I still don't think we're making that connection. Okay. Diane, could you add that to the, to the form? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. I appreciate thank it. You. Yeah, they have to make it relatable to Tarpon and to the master plan. Lucianne, why don't you um, write to me, the, uh, email me the specific question? Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, back to our dear old electrical boxes. Is anybody interested in pursuing this? Anyone? I found one. <laughs> I had, I, they were so invisible to me, or mm -hmm. have been so invisible to me. Um, <clears throat> I guess I found one on the corner of Tarpon Avenue and Alternate 19 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by Mears parking lot. Right. Otherwise, I've never seen them before. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think, I think uh, somebody mentioned, I think, at the last meeting, and I have to support that comment, is, you know, how busy do we want the streetscapes to look? I think it just, mm -hmm. there's more than enough stuff. You know, like I always get annoyed and I know there's nothing we could do about it. Every time I hit that light and look over to my left where the story time sculpture is, it's, you have to look through this forest of poles and signs and, and everything else. It's like enough is enough. So uh, can I have a motion to, um, uh, uh, go forward with the electrical boxes. Go forward? I yes, I can't make a negative motion. We What's can it? make a positive um, motion and vote it against it. So I would say there's two things you might want to go for, class or clutter. And I think that... Nicely said. There might be just too much going on. Right. I mean, there's so many signs on alternate 19 already mm -hmm. that you almost wreck just trying to look at them. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so do you want to make a motion to uh, do the uh, electrical boxes? I'd make a motion to take it off completely. No, we have to vote to do it, and then it gets voted down. Oh. It's a, just like a cork in Robert's rules. So, so we got to vote to do it? Mm -hmm. no, yeah, you have to, to move to vote it. Make a motion, make to, a motion table to do it. Now this sounds like over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to call okay. it. Okay. Robert's rules. So you're going to... <laughs> 
make a motion to go forward with the electrical boxes. You're going to uh, second it? I'll second it. Okay. Oh. All right. Do we have to have a second? All in yeah, favor say aye. All against say nay. 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 Motion is <laughs> declined. I get it. Okay. There we go. We've all had a lot of that be a lesson, <laughs> lesson in, lesson in Robert's board. rules. I thought if we didn't have a second that it would kill it. Uh, it's, 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 but it's still, it's still alive. Okay. It's still kind yeah. of alive. Okay. I, I, gotcha. I wanted it gotcha. okay. gone. gone. Okay, Lucy Ann, the water feature. <clears throat> um, no new developments because um, we really do need to coordinate with other city um, mm -hmm. departments before we can even consider going forward. Um, Bill did a great job of reviewing the complexity of this location and the Whitcomb Bayou location mm -hmm. last meeting. And if you, ha if you haven't listened to that tape, I recommend that you do. Mm -hmm. But just for clarity's sake, I'd like to review how we've gotten to this point. Um, several meetings ago, Diane brought the proposal for us to consider a water feature fountain, mm -hmm. some sort of infrastructure um, dealing with water within Spring Bayou. I'm sorry, I've tried to turn off my phone and I, I'm not having luck. Oh, this, you don't hear it. No. Um, we. I started investigating, and what I found was, particularly in Netherlands and Europe, there is a lot of attention to water being used as flood control and, in a different way, as cooling stations oh. on land. So we began to talk about something actually in the water, in Spring Bayou, mm -hmm. and or installations on land that would be um, artistic installations mm -hmm. but also serve a, a purpose in climate change which is to be a, a cooling uh, cooling station for, mm -hmm. for one of a, right. a better um, word. Uh, we talked a lot about the regulatory issues um, primarily in Spring Bayou, the issues of the manatee, uh, the issues of all of the different agencies that have jurisdiction there. Um, then last meeting, uh, talking about the endangered species, you all began talking about the area along Whitcomb Bayou where the riprap is. Mm -hmm. Right now, the city is engaged in an engineering study on flood control all along that shoreline. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where it is at this point. I know um, it's with the city's engineering firm. Mm -hmm. The riprap may survive, mm -hmm. it may not. Mm -hmm. So really until there is some clarity on the infrastructure, I, you know, I, so, this is all a way of my reinforcing the fact that we really need to be talking to the city manager, mm -hmm. to engineering, and to um, project management to find out what is actually feasible. These are huge infrastructure projects. Mm -hmm. And um, for us to go off on our own, I think, is folly. Right. But the flip side of that is if public art can be planned into the infrastructure mm -hmm. from the get-go, that's a whole lot more effective than having the flood control project done and our planning a piece of art on top of it. Mm -hmm. So I... Right, so it's all a matter of yeah, coordination and... Yeah, I, and I, well, it will take a huge amount of funding but I also think it, we really have to have a green light from the city manager mm -hmm. before we go off. Um, right. That's very pretty. I so. agree. Mm -hmm. And But I think our sticking point is representation. Is? Representation. Public art being represented within 
a, a strategic plan for whatever project there is. Mm -hmm. And I don't see that that happens. Well, you well, got I think this is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here, well, segue into this. I don't see that this, it's, mm. well, it's happened in the past. I don't mm -hmm. see that. So that I would, you're, you're right, to that. dialogue and communication. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a great opportunity, and hopefully you all will be able to attend this meeting. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great way to mm -hmm. bring right. up those ideas. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I agree. I think this is a good place for us to be and be present, but I still think we need to address these specific ideas at mm -hmm. the staff level. And you really kind of have to be our, um, our guide on that, Diane. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your timeline to get together some things? I think, like I said, COVID has put a, a <laughs> it's crippled a lot of, you know, departments right now. So mm -hmm. until I think things start getting a little bit better, hopefully I've heard from our fire chief that, you know, maybe he's heard that by the end of January, you know, things will maybe level out, you know, but, you know, he doesn't have a magic ball either. So Is I don't know, what are your thoughts? Is but there someone with the city that could come into a meeting even, you know, maybe in February and bring us up to speed with, with where all these different pieces are currently, you know, the engineering study, mm -hmm. uh, what is the goal of some of these mm -hmm. projects going forward? Is there anybody that could come in and speak to that yeah. to kind of give us a, a, you know, half hour, 15 minute, half hour update? As to yeah. timelines and, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe some Bob of the goals. Robertson, who's yeah. the, the mm -hmm. project yeah. manager. Mm -hmm. And then following that, I think, you know, if, if it lends itself to it, uh, maybe that's when we come up with a workshop that we can get the sustainability committee and some of the other folks that, you know, all have stake in this, all the stakeholders together. Because what I'd like to see is, which is what everybody's saying here, is mm -hmm. public art needs to be a stakeholder in mm -hmm. some of these right. large infrastructure projects because we can really help beautify, you know, some hardscape. Mm -hmm. Do you have an idea of what that project would be? Like, well, like we have lots of ideas, but I think there are very real regulatory, engineering, mm -hmm. and technical questions that um, limit our our ability to act so exactly I think if we're all in the same room together and mm -hmm. you know if somebody for example said there is no way you're putting anything in spring bio mm -hmm. then we know right, right. so mm -hmm. I don't I, I, we don't have a specific project mm -hmm. we have what you proposed we have what I've seen um, in terms of on land things but I you know I think now is the time to Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could ask Bob. Yeah. Well, it's also where the water meets the land. You know, we're seeing living seawalls. We're seeing all kinds mm -hmm. of things that are being done that are very progressive. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I don't know. What what are they thinking? What are, what, what's the end goal that they're trying to achieve? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to make sure that they know that this group is interested in participating. In, Stakeholder. You know, I'll ask for the next meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very well. And maybe after that, meet after that, to pre, you know, Q and A, then you can decide whether you know you want to move on to a workshop or, like you said, whether it's maybe if it is or isn't viable. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, all right. Thinning out the illuminated art boxes in the new locations. We kind of discussed that. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. No. It, it's just the good timing because we'll, we'll get this comprehensive plan, so we'll get some information and intel mm -hmm. with that, and we have somebody come in and speak with us. I think that that's going to lend itself to, right. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Good sequence. <clears throat> right. So, you know, I guess as, as many of us that, you know, could come to this uh, workshop as possible, that would be great. I think for public works um, benefit, it would be good if you all could decide um, how many you want of the eliminated art boxes to go to the towards the sponge docks, and how many you want to hold for Sisler. 
Mm -hmm. Because if they put up, if they think they're putting up all five of them at Sponge Docks, you know, mm -hmm. um, if, do you want me to just save two or? I would say from, from looking down there, I'd say put three down there now, keep two back. Definitely put one at Sisler, maybe two at Sisler, and if not, you've got one in case you have an accident someplace that something doesn't work any longer and you've got a replacement. Mm -hmm. So, as a backup. Okay. Um, I know we've discussed this on and off, but uh, does anybody have any definitive comments about uh, purchasing some smaller ones or some hardwired ones? They're significantly less expensive mm -hmm. than doing the solar. David, would you like to talk to uh, Jeff Davis at Portal Boards and get some specifics? For sure. If he could CC me in that email. Right. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, I went down there and viewed him again from another aspect, the backside. Mm -hmm. And the brackets that they have holding those solar panels, it just seems very busy up high. I mean, it kind of takes away from the whole historic look. And maybe we could talk with Tom, Mr. Function, and maybe he could use these for something, or maybe we could use all these solar panels and battery boxes for a future project. Maybe it's these sculptures, and we do to where they don't we don't have power running to them or something, and we're doing something of that nature. But it looks really busy down there already. And then to see the wires going out the poles, and then you have the battery box, and then that silver metallic frame. It just seems, it seems like a little too much. Yeah, there were some negative comments about the cluttered look. Though. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. you just can't see it. Yeah. So. Now those boxes can go either solar or they can be powered. They can, they can be, be modified. They yeah. can be modified either direction. So you could, you know. Right. Yeah, they were they were custom made. With the solar, in fact, that's it delayed quite a while the, the production of them because they were all custom. So, I got a question: Could we hardwire a couple of them, and then go out there and look at the difference? Okay, is that a possibility? You want to talk to uh, Jeff first, and find out like the technical. I, I don't. I don't know whether it's just a matter of like switching one wire to another source or whether. Yeah, you know. Yeah, there might be a setting inside there that you just switch it over, or it's got a different board or something. Yeah. Well, he designed since he designed it, it might be prudent, yeah, to talk to him because there might be another element that he'd have to send that allows them to convert it. Right. You know, like a charger block or something. Yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. And I'm not sure how much uh, amps those they support either on a complex unit. Yeah. It's, it's rather interesting to see them without the, the panels in because they're basically just a, a metal, a heavy metal frame with a strip of LED lights that mm -hmm. are like set into the, the, the box part of the frame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the, you know, the panels just slide in and the LEDs give that nice, uh, even, you know, light to the, to the vinyl. So, you know, they really, really works very well. Okay, so you're going to get in touch with Jeff yep. and then, you know, let us know about... Uh, well, you'll uh, email... Yes. So, okay. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Um, this is kind of an item of new business. It just came up. Um, I'm sure you're aware that uh, the uh, Board of Commissioners approved a CRA matching grant for murals on private property. Okay. Um the PAC has to approve all of the designs, as does the uh, TRC, the Technical Review Committee. So um, I got an email from Karen Lemons, and uh, I believe Diane and I are going to get together with her at some point tomorrow and uh, to fine tune the, the whole process. But uh, conveniently, the TRC meets on the second Thursday. So they, they meet the day after we do. So if anybody puts in an application for the matching grants, it'll come to us at our monthly meeting for approval, and it will automatically go on the TRC uh, agenda. If we disapprove it, it'll be pulled from the agenda. If we approve it, then it will be passed by the 
uh, TRC and go, you know, just through the regular channels. So anybody have any questions? What is the TRC? Technical Review Committee. I think I had the one question about the upkeep on it. Mm -hmm. Was that going to be the property owner that did yes. the upkeep? Yes, right. And this is, this is, uh, city's just totally hands off. Okay. Hacks hands off. The only thing, the only role we have in this is approving the design. Okay. So uh, it's it's a contract between the artist and the building owner. Mm -hmm. Debbie? Who brought this up in the uh, Board of Commission? Carr. Okay. And, uh, you know, there was some discussion. I was actually at the meeting, and they, it's a matching, it's a match. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it maxes out at $2,500 per mural. $2,500 total or $5,000 total? The match is, well, in other words, the, the, if the mural's $5,000, the maximum match is $2,500. Okay. If the mural's 1000 then it would be a $500 match. Debbie? And that's city budget, not public art budget. Correct. It's CRA. It's an actually... A, uh, Tell me what CRA is. Uh, Community Redevelopment Agency. <laughs> Thank you. Community Redevelopment Agency. I just okay. did it. So, so our city could wind up looking very... Um, Painted? Mm. <laughs> Thanks. I was looking for that word. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons, you know, Commissioner Terrapani was the one that, you know, threw in the PAC approval for the designs. That had four shots. So, but I mean, you know, I'm sh I'm sure you're aware of the uh, mural on the side of the Acropolis building on Tarpon Ave. That was completely. How could we miss it? But that was completely <laughs> private. That was between the artist and the building owner. The only time we come into play is if they ask for the great grant money. Personally, I think we should have a say in just about. Mm -hmm everything that's painted on that scale but that would require some kind of amendment to the ordinance i think this all goes back to the con comprehensive plan i think you're right mm -hmm. you know, what is the end result that we're looking for of tarpon springs is it a mediterranean you know look are we going for an old-fashioned look mm -hmm. what where are we trying to go with all this that's right. an excellent question it is and something that we really need to figure out what it's going to be. I mean, we're in the 21st century. Thank you. The historical you town, we're the you can town, <laughs> we're a small town, mm -hmm. we, have, we have industry, it's identifiable. I mean, it's it, we're all over the place, and if we keep going all over the place, mm -hmm. it's going to look like we're, right. you know, just sort of scatter shot here and there. I mean, there's... Yeah. It's branding. It, it's yeah. branding. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Um, <laughs> I'm, you know, the, the flag... Uh, that to me is a Confederate battle flag um, mm -hmm. basis, uh, but it's that, that, it's the seal, it's 14 or 28,000 logos for each department, it's mm -hmm. signage all over town. Mm -hmm. It's and, very confusing. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Even the you know, there's, there is no um, consistent graphic image mm -hmm. that reflects the question that David just Who are we? brought up. Right. Well, I think that's something that def definitely should come up at the, the comprehensive planning meeting because I think, uh, you know, by ordinance, our mission is to be responsible for the whole artistic appearance of the town. That's why I think we should also approve even the private murals because otherwise you end up with this hodgepodge of stuff. Isn't that part of our mission yeah yeah okay yeah I thought so yeah but you know I mean if 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 everyone is just given free reign to do what they want you know it, it's kind of you know should they be taking over you know something that we're responsible for you know and you know or how much control yeah well ultimately responsible for right when somebody says what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> no. 
But then you get into the art is in the eye of the beholder kind of true. issues, you know. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, uh, yes, it's true. Right Look, the city of Norfolk well, did a, a, an alleyway, and it's it's a neon alleyway, and with with quite a bit of graffiti, and and it's absolutely beautiful. So, mm -hmm. speaking to that, it is in the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. But also speaking to what Robert brought up was that we, how Mediterranean are we? Oh, mm -hmm. well, excuse me, we're not. We have a population that originated from that area, mm -hmm. but we truly are the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would like to see that reflected more. City logo, city flag. Yeah, Diane? One thing I would like to do is, um, I've been in contact in the past several times with um, the public art um, director for the city of Tarpa, uh, Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. Tampa, Tampa. I always want to say Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'd love to see if she could come to one of our meetings and just kind of have 30 minutes to That's a have great idea. feedback from mm -hmm. you all and question and answer and, you know, you know, the way they do their call to artists and how they keep a cohesion because... You know, I just love how the city of t uh, Tampa has, you know, really kind of, they've got a m menagerie of different styles Tactics, and things, yeah. but it it somehow works. It does. It, and it, it looks, it's tasteful, mm -hmm. you know, and it represents as lots of different styles of art. So, yeah. I mean, she may be able to give us some good insights into, you know, how to direct the bus, you know, kind right. of thing, moving mm -hmm. forward. Yeah, because Bill, yeah. Bill brought up a very you know, pertinent point about is the right of the private property owner. Mm, exactly. You know, so, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a, you know, one of my favorite quotes from H.L. Mencken is, for every complex problem, there's a simple solution. <laughs> and it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is a perfect example of that. It's, it's, there's a lot of things at play that we have to consider. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, as Debbie said, people are going to point at us and say, why did you let that, you know, mm -hmm. why did you let that go through? And the other is uh, what I've been told is a spite mural, that, that two- or three-story building on Alt-19. And it's this, these huge, it's a sponge diver and everything. It's super bright and it's huge. You can only see it when you're going south on 19. Mm. Mm. On what bu which building? 19 it's a private house. Alternate 19. Alternate 19. I'm sorry. It says you're approaching Orange from like the sponge docks. It's on the left hand side as you're yeah. you know, coming it's up a on big, Orange. Like it's a yeah, two or right. three story apartment building. I'm going to have to hmm. go by and look. Oh, you'll, you'll, <laughs> yeah, you'll see it. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll notice it. <laughs> but um, so private property is one thing, but grant money is another. Right. So once, once uh, you know, it's sort of a quid pro quo. If, if they're asking the city for money, then the city, through us, has some kind of say. It, yeah, the, you would think the city has some kind of say about what your architecture is, doesn't it? You know, and the, you know, can, you, can you decide to put up a yurt on, the, on an empty piece of property? <laughs> would the city allow that? Right. I mean, uh, so you know the, the the city has some responsibility in some of the somewhere right. with, in relationship to the private owner of right. a business on a public street. Mm -hmm. you know. I mean houses. That's a that's code enforcement. Right. <laughs> so it goes back or, to what Lucy Ann was saying about all of these this cooperative communication between all the different city departments. It's. And part of it is, is our job in, in, in trying to educate the public. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to educate, you know, that there's this, you know, what kind of, you know, what kind of image do we want to have and what quality mm -hmm. image do we want to have. And, uh, well, unfortunately, it all goes back to what Diane said about no accounting for taste. Yeah. Well, the, the, you can still deal with that because mm -hmm. ta taste can be dealt with and, and uh, as, as you're saying about about Tampa, you know, like I know, you know, some of the people on those boards, and they're 
you know, they draw their people, their their artists from from international sources, mm -hmm. and uh, they have a different budget than we have. <laughs> yeah, I I could imagine. <laughs> When you look at some of that stuff at the airport, that still goes through the city in a way. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, uh, there's there's a certain kind of standard that they're they're looking for, and mm -hmm. that usually then people start trying to come up to that level. Right. I mean, right. when I lived in Kansas City, there were, you know, Kansas City. Every, everybody thinks of it as sort of way out west, and it is. It's one of the more cultural cities in the country, and uh, there are five or six groups of uh, foundations, uh, Hallmark and the Hall family and mm -hmm. uh, the H&R uh, Block people, all these things, Sam, uh, is that Samsonite, there's, there's, there's a whole number of people, and they're into art collecting, mm -hmm. and they try to art collect each other. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they, they're like gunslingers, except they're art slingers. Mm. You know, and so they're they're trying to show that they're mm -hmm. more, uh, you know, they're more cultured than the other guy. Right, right. right. Then yeah. you have the support of the foundation. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you have the support of foundation. You have the city then that's mm -hmm. catering to that, right. and then you have people that are are trying to join in with that to be right. part of that spirit. Okay. Well, we just have a couple of reminders which are on your agenda. I think we all know that. If uh, to notify Diane, if. Uh, you can't attend. Robert's good to have you back. Okay. Uh, give a few, your handouts in advance. Uh, our next meeting is Wednesday, February 9th at 2 p.m. And can I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, Diana. I sorry. just have one announcement. Um, Elizabeth Indianos, who did the mural in the Cultural Center, she is actually bringing that mural to life via a, a microplay. Um, and so um, if you get on tarponarts.org um, website, you can see it. It's This Blessed Plot, This Earth, the name of the mural. And uh, she's doing six shows at the end of January coming up. So it would be nice if the U.S. Public Art Committee members could attend. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, any other comments or can I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Okay, second. We are adjourned at 317. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you for your vote of confidence. It seems like we'll all be there February 2nd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to be out of town. Oh, are you? Second, third. Mm -hmm. And Fort Myers singing. Could you sing us a little piece? I'm not sure. Just going to drive the horse <laughs> <from> the brandy. <laughs> I'm not sure.